Hi, this is your host, Bhartia, and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Stephen Kim, CTO of the Carrick Group, and Nathan Harvey, developer advocate at Dora and Google Cloud. Stephen, Nathan, it's great to have you both on the show. Great to be here. Oh, thanks so much for having us. Today we are going to talk about the State of DevOps survey. But before we go there, I would love to learn a bit more about DevOps Research and Assessment Program, or Dora. Talk a bit about it. Dora, as you mentioned, DevOps Research and Assessment, is an ongoing research program that's been running for, wow, almost a decade at this point. Uh, This research program really seeks to answer the question, how do teams get better at delivering and operating software? And does that matter to organizations? Uh, And of course, not surprisingly, what we find is that yes, technology drives value and innovation across organizations of every shape and size, and that there are proven ways to not only measure, but also ways to improve how teams accomplish that, that software delivery and operations performance. Can you talk a bit about what kind of data is being collected and you know, saying and how and what you learn from this data? When we talk about Dora, we really think about, uh, of course, commercial outcomes. Is, a, is an organization performing? But then we have to look at some metrics to understand how is our software delivery and operations performance going. And for the metrics, we use four key measures for software delivery performance. Two of those measures look at throughput, two that look at stability. On the throughput side, we ask these questions of how long does it take for a team to get changes into production and how frequently are we doing that? And so we call those respectively your change lead time and your deployment frequency. Of course, we wanna move faster, but we need to do so safely in a way that's stable. And so on the stability side, we, we have the question of, how, how frequently are those changes that you're pushing causing a failure or interrupting your customer's experience? And then finally on the stability side, we know that we don't live in a world where there is zero risk. There's always risk in our systems. So we have to look at when we, when we do have an outage or an incident, how quickly does a team react and respond and restore that service to our users? So to recap the four metrics, their deployment frequency, change lead time, change failure rate, and then your time to restore service. Taken together, these four measures help us really assess how well is any one application or service performing. And so we ask in our survey each year, getting to your question of how do we get this data, each year we launch a survey and we go out into the world with that survey and try to collect as much data as we can. And in fact, we'd love for you to participate today at dora.dev slash survey. And in that survey, we ask the questions about those four key metrics, but then we go deeper and we ask about different capabilities that drive performance of those four key metrics. Those capabilities cut across technical process and cultural capabilities. Technical like, are you using version control? What does your test automation look like? process such as what does your change approval process look like Um, and how much work do you have in process at any given time and how do you prioritize that work and then culture things like how does your team collaborate with one another when there is a failure what sort of lessons do you take from that failure or do you just look to figure out who should you fire because of that failure please please don't do that. Uh, But these are the types of things that we dig into in in the survey each year. What Nathan is talking about here was uh, actually really useful to me um, to understand how Dora has the four metrics. Obviously, it's it's delivery and and the performance of a software organization. It's very complex and it's nuanced. Um, And the things that Nathan is describing here and what we gather in the survey um, and try to do introspection on um, it really highlights how the four Dora metrics is can really be an effective conversation piece, right? To go in and say, okay, let's start here. Uh, but really beneath that surface is, um, as we imagine, a lot of different directions that we can explore, ask questions about and measure and gather input on um, to get ultimately toward a productive goal. What should we do, right? What are, what, what might be some efforts um, that we might kick off, what might be some focus area that we um, start looking at a little bit closer as a result of the conversations that we've had. And that way, um, Adora, you know, that is widely accepted, 
um, has been really, really useful for, for, for a company like Carrot, for example, uh, where we come on sort of a common substrate that we can go in and embark on a productive conversation. If you like look at, you know, the previous, you know, 2022 uh, report, can you share, you know, some of the highlights that were there? And then we'll see, you know, if you're expecting something different this year. There were definitely, so as, as, as part of the research, we publish an annual report, the Accelerate State of DevOps report. And so in the 2022 research and then the subsequent report, one of the tight focus areas for us was around security. You know, we, we often think about security as the department of no, the department that's slowing down our deployment frequency. But we wanted to test that in our data. And one of the things that we saw is that the teams that have better security practices are actually able to have better software delivery practices and better organizational performance. So better security doesn't slow you down. But then probably the most interesting thing we found about security was the number one predictor of the capability, the, the foundational capability that predicts better security practices was culture. It wasn't a specific tool. It wasn't a specific technology. It was the culture of your team. How does your team work together? How do we collaborate? How do we learn from one another? Do we have a culture of learning within our organization? It, it might not come as a surprise, but we have data that backs this up and shows that culture is that key driver. One thing that uh, Nathan and I spoke about earlier in the week was um, the survey is gathering response from humans. Um, and the uh, DORA metrics, as described, as we said, um, it are measurable. They're objectively measurable. What is your lead time? What is your defect rate? What is your mean time to remediation? Um, and we talked about, you know, do they and how uh, does what humans say about what happens and what we go and observe and measure, how do they compare? And what we found in our conversation and looking at the information was that they do align and they converge over time. Uh, so it's really interesting to me uh, because obviously um, the adoption of best practices and the endeavor to try to go and improve developer output right, and, and, and team productivity um, is uh, one that is a combination of technology and process, organizational behavior, culture, really, as Nathan goes and describes. And so I really appreciate how um, the survey, I, I, honestly, I, a little bit of a confession, Nathan, sorry, this was the first time that I took the survey and I went and responded to it. Um, but uh, I was pleasantly surprised by sort of how broad uh, it captured information um, from a human perspective uh, in support of uh, relevance to the DORA metrics. Thank you for taking it, Stephen. The more, the, more, the more insight we get, the better. And, you know, one of the things that's key to DORA and, and sort of foundational to DORA is that it is program and platform agnostic. And DORA recognizes that it, this is a journey of continuous improvement, and improving doesn't mean just throwing new tools at the problem all the time. It's us. It's the people in the system that matter probably more than anything else. And so your developers, your operators, your QA testers, your security folks, we really want to get at the heart of their lived experience and understand what does that tell us? And you mentioned a journey of improvement. It's the people that are on that journey. And we have to maintain that commitment over time to really building that practice of continuous improvement. And so it is so important that we start with the people. These surveys, these reports, they do help not only the community, the ecosystem, you know, Google, uh, all these players as well. I also want to look at the, the folks that who are taking these surveys. How does that benefit them? So when they are taking this survey, they are like honest to just like folks like, you know, Stephen, when they take survey, they do know what they are going to get out of that as well. As well. I think that's a really interesting question because, of course, you know, it helps us all to learn from each other. But how does it help you to take the survey? Well, first, it's an investment. And I want to be very clear about that. Sharing your insights into this, this data is an investment of your time and your capacity and so forth. We do try to keep the survey to about 15 minutes, so it's not a huge investment. But what's your return on that investment? I think, importantly, and I hear this feedback all the time, Stephen actually mentioned it just a, a few minutes ago, Dora is about driving discussions. I think as an individual, as I sit down to take the survey and I carefully consider the questions that are posed in that survey, I immediately start to identify areas where my team is doing really well and 
probably some areas where my team has opportunities to improve, maybe things that I hadn't even thought about. And so after I take that survey, going and sharing that with my team to help drive improvement, I think is, is so powerful. And so the more people, frankly, you can get on your team to take the survey, maybe we'll find places where we're well aligned. And maybe more interestingly, we'll find places where we disagree on some of the answers. That's the place where I want to go and focus a conversation with the team. Let's learn from each other. And it's survey, you know, if you look at just organizations, it's not that some one person takes a survey from the whole organization because different teams, they are looking at things differently. So the more people within the same organization take the survey, the better it is to, uh, not only for the organization, but for the survey itself. I should also mention, of course, that the survey is completely anonymous. We don't know who you are, who's taken it. And, and, and that is, of course, a way to encourage both honest responses uh, so that we can get the best insights out of this data. As you were talking about earlier, the some of the key findings of the previous survey, based on the, those, you know, whatever we learned from that, was there any changes or you know any improvement or any questions that you asked this year or are going to ask this year? So we certainly uh, evolve the questions that we ask each year. There are some tried and true things that we ask every year, like those four key metrics. But we also have to be cognizant of this, you know, how long can the survey be? We want to keep it relatively short. So we have to stay focused. Otherwise, no one's going to complete a survey if we ask, uh, you know, an hour's worth of questions. We'll get no data, essentially. So this year we are focusing in on a couple of things. First, you know, I don't know if you've heard this term or not, AI. AI. Uh, a lot of people are talking about AI. So uh, we aren't going deep into AI within this year's survey, but we're just trying to get a pulse. Where is AI actually being used within your development process today? I think that having that information now here in 2023 is going to help us as we continue this research. So that's one area that's brand new this year. We're asking a couple of questions about that. We're also doing something that I, I think is interesting this year with, with one of those four key metrics, the change failure rate, as an example. So change failure rate, we've asked questions like, what is your change failure rate? And we've given you options to select like zero to 15%, 16 to 30%, et cetera, sort of these buckets. What we find is that there's not a lot of difference across teams. And we, we uh, hypothesize that that's because the buckets are just too wide. So we've allowed each individual to, to basically on a slider say it's 1%, it's 3%, it's 7%. We think that that'll give us richer data. And then the third thing that we've done really importantly this year to encourage global, more global participation, we've done some localization of the survey. Did I mention that it's at dora.dev slash survey? Uh, but if you go there, you can today uh, take the survey in Portuguese, in Japanese, and then I think we have a couple of other languages like French, Spanish, and maybe even Russian coming shortly behind that. Frankly, we're running an experiment. If we make the uh, survey available in other languages, do we see greater global participation? So help us prove that hypothesis, please. Talk a bit about um, uh, the involvement of companies like organizations like Caric there uh, with the survey, what they bring to the table, and of course, you know how it benefits the larger ecosystem again. The things that uh, Dora and the in the larger community are focusing on is right up our wheelhouse. Um, and as we talked about, Dora is a really important conversation. It, it gets the conversations going. Uh, and more so, obviously, just about every organization is obviously thinking and talking about it, but it really guides them um, toward things that we can go and pick up and then do something with, which is the important part as well, right? Um, Carrick's model has always been to embed and work with the organization. You know, we go and employ uh, things like Lighthouse uh, and pilot models where we go and improve um, hypotheses out. And so, you know, as we come to, uh, obviously we can go to sit with you and run through a door oriented workshop to go and take uh, baseline measurements of where you are, what some good targets for you might be considering what uh, the things that are asked in the survey, for example, might go and yield. Uh, and then we can go and work towards specific things uh, that go to start uh, moving the needle on the metrics that we collectively agree are important to you. So maybe we're sort of on the backside um, of, the, of the assessment part. Uh, but once again, you know, starting the conversation is really, really critical. And so I think that makes Carrick's interest in the survey, you know, dora.dev slash survey, 
uh, really, uh, it's really important to us. It's really important to us that companies are in a deliberate um, and, and, and really in a guided and tried and true way uh, to join the larger community uh, that is engaged in this journey, you know, rather than trying to go and do one off on their own. They can obviously go and do that as well. But I think, you know, the Dora survey uh, and the Dora conversations will be really, really helpful. Um, full cycle of um, getting tangible benefits to the organization out of this exercise that starts with something like the Dora survey. Yeah, and I, plus one to all of that. And I think it's it's so, we, we are so lucky to get to work with partners like Carrick. I think that so many organizations see the metrics, use the, use the metrics to help drive conversations. But then what comes next? How do we put that into action? And that's where a, a coach and a partner like Carrick can really come in and help a team start building up those muscles. Uh, and it really is, I, I, I really equate it to building up muscles of how do we get better? Well, how do we get better at getting better? Carrick is a great partner to help us along that journey. Yeah, if I can highlight two specific things that I'm, I think is effective and I'm proud of that we've done. Um, number one is we actually do instrumentation. Uh, so we actually go to build dashboards, we do instrumentation of your code pipeline and your release pipeline, and we go to and deliver uh, for our clients the baseline and the ongoing, on an ongoing basis, what is the uh, progression, right? Um, and it's almost always to the up and to the right. Where it isn't, it's a surprise and it goes and brings about interesting further conversations of, wait a minute, why, why is that happening, right? Uh, which then leads to further action. So it's a very, very productive mm -hmm. uh, one. That's number one. Uh, and number two, uh, the thing that I'm particularly proud of what we do deliberately is we, we go to an infused culture um, into our engagements. So as Nathan was pointing out, it's about culture and it's about people and it's a mentality. Uh, and, you know, that starts with individuals, but it also speaks, uh, starts with, uh, it also speaks to, to organizational behavior, which then leads you to conversations about um, everything from empathy to organizational structure. <laughs> and in between, uh, there's a lot to be gained uh, to walk through this. Um, Take the experience that not only us, but any other um, looking outside can bring in of how do other companies that have different measurements, how, what are they doing that might be same or different from what we are doing. But the important part is engaging outside your walls uh, in, a, in, a, in a deliberate exercise in this. Nathan, Stephen, thank you so much for taking time out today and of course explain the, the, the importance of Dura and also the survey. Thanks for you know all those insights and I would love to chat with you folks again when the results of surveys are out and we can actually discuss what we learned this year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.